Hello, hello everybody. Good to see all of you here today. And today we are going to be talking about this project, which is none other than Leden Green. So the thing is this, uh, Leden Green has been in the market for quite some time. And I think it's due for a revisit to understand what are the opportunities in this project and like what are the things that we should look out for when we are trying to buy in this area. So let's take a deep dive right, and look at what's happening over here. And before I start, right, the usual disclaimers, apologies, uh, it's not very clear over here but the main thing is this before you buy any project right please make sure that you do your own due diligence before you make any purchase okay so let's start uh. when we are talking about leaden green right it's actually this uh, parcel of land so over here you can see that it's actually pre a pretty big parcel of land uh, quite regular uh, shape and this project right used to be another used to be called Tulip Garden. So this was actually on block uh, in the past, um, and it ha and is now converted to this project called Leiden Green. Okay, so let us understand what is the this project all about. So when we look at this project, right, it's actually in District Ten. Okay, and it's a six hundred and uh, thirty eight units project. So it's actually pretty uh, nicely sized. So there's sufficient units for uh, amenities like swimming pool, uh, a gym. So the facilities will be complete because this is a pretty good size uh, unit. And the expected TOP for this project is actually the Q one two zero two four. This so that's about three years, almost three years from now so that's not too bad the distance from the MRT is 850 meters I won't exactly call it like a, a fantastic distance to the MRT because it's actually 850 meters to walk in this kind of distance um, the tenant or the owners itself right will likely sweat uh, quite a bit and it's like quite a long distance walk uh. but the good thing is this when we are looking at this area right it's likely that most of the people that are staying in, in this region will likely drive a car or, or, or will take like uh, grab or private transport so in other words right it's still not too bad when it comes to this area so this project is actually by mcl land and yen lot uh, land so um mcl land is a uh, and, and, and yen lot right have been in the game uh, for quite some time in the in the property development world for quite some time so i'm going to also explain a bit about that okay so when we look at this project, right, one thing we want to understand, right, is that is that is this project built for investors or is this project built for like homeowners? And how is the sale so far? And like, can we predict that it will will the prices be holding stable or will it be like increasing or decreasing? So let's take a look. So when we look at this project, right, it has been launched in January uh, two zero two zero. So it's about a year's time plus already. And the thing is, when you look at the availability across the one bedroom to uh, four bedroom. Room, right? You can realize that it's still about 60 plus percent available in each category. So in other words, right, there's still a lot of units available for choice uh, for, for, for purchases. But one very interesting thing is this. The garden villa is fully sold out. Although it only has five units, right? It's actually fully sold out. So in this area, right, one opportunity that we can see is that the huge size units are highly sought after. So that is uh, one thing to note. Uh, if you are if you are super ultra high net worth, you want to buy a huge ass uh, unit, right? This is a good choice in this uh, in this area as the demand is there. Okay. So when we look at the four, one bedroom um, units in this area, in this project, you can see that they actually size about 400 plus per square feet and there's still like 90 over units uh, available. So in other words, in other words right, uh, investors, investors are still not biting, okay? This, uh, and I think it's uh, possibly a, because of a distance from the MRT and the quantum. So we are going to study into that. The two bedroom is facing the same situation whereby um, the availability and the three bedroom also availability are still pretty high. So, 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 um, maybe this area will be prime for some discounts from the dis developers. So that, so stay tuned for that. I think that will be something that will be interesting because it has already been one year. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the criteria one, which is the growth area and the unique selling points. So right now, right, what we are going to call it is actually the demand drivers. What are the things that will cause or create demand in this area? Okay, so first of all, right, when we are looking at growth, uh, um, there's nothing much that's going to be happening in this feral area. But when we zoom out, there's going to be one off and what so, right? But first of all, right, let's take a look at what is in the vicinity of this Leiden Green. So when we look at Leiden Green, right, you can see Holland Village to be nearby. 
there's going to be like Dempsey Hill. Uh, I mean, a lot of F and B in the area and botanical gardens, botanic gardens. So um, the thing is, there's a lot of greenery amenities when you start to travel a bit further. So those who have uh, those who, those who own cars, right, to find this place pretty good because it's also quite a short distance uh, drive away from Orchard. Okay, and one other thing that we want to look at, right, when we talk about Leiden Green, is actually in in a way is actually in a GCB enclave. So when you look to the to the to the north, uh, west and northeast and to the south, right, you can see it's made a lot of uh, GCB plots of land. So Leiden Green, right, is one of the rare projects, right, that is like among a lot of our uh, high end properties. So that's something to note. So I, I, I guess that it's potentially have more privacy, you potentially have a more quiet and like peaceful environment in this area. So let's talk about the growth uh, uh, when it comes to Leiden Green. So over here, right, you can see Leiden Green to be this uh, plot over here. And when you travel a bit more south, this is where you start to encounter uh, One North, okay? So uh, One North is definitely growing with like Razor being there and the Grab building is like coming up, right? And uh, what's happening is that there will be a lot of job creation. So that is actually a positive uh, when it comes to having One North uh, in the area. But the thing is, there's still, uh, there's also a lot of residential buildings that's going to be coming up uh, in the in, in the One North, like Normanton uh, and also One North Eden. And there's going to be like Kenridge Hill. So by the way, we also done a video on Cambridge Hill. So if you want to understand like what's happening in the Cambridge Hill area, right? Do remember to click on uh, on our link, right? That you will show up, and you can and you can see our analysis on Cambridge Hill. And hi, Kelvin Cole. Good to see you here today in our chat. So let me bring up. Your oh hi Kel, uh, hi Kelvin. I hope you are learning something so far and like enjoying this uh, presentation. Okay, okay. So. When we come, when it comes to the one north area, right? There's still one more thing that we want to talk about, which is actually the Dover Knowledge District. So buying in this like whole area or owning a property in this whole area is actually a positive because in the short run there's gonna be one north, and in the longer run there's gonna be like Dover Knowledge District. So this is like something that I really like in this area. Okay, so. We, when we talk about Leiden Green, right, there is one very interesting thing, which is that there is one block within Leiden Green, right, that is within a one kilometer distance to Nanyang Primary, which is like obviously one of the more popular schools in Singapore. And hi, Adeline, good to see you here today. Okay, so when it comes to uh, Nanyang Primary, right, what you can see is that um, it's definitely a popular school. So in other words, right, uh, and by the way, there's still two bedrooms and three bedroom units available in, in this uh, Block 26. Uh. So that's something to actually really look into because it means that the two bedrooms over here and the three bedrooms over here right, will be popular. Yes, hi. Apologies, I can't really uh, pronounce your name. Uh. I'm, I'm not that good with Mandarin, but yes, hi. Good to see you here today. And hi, Sharon. Wow, today there's a lot of people online. Very good. Good to see all of you here. Okay, hi Sharon. Yes, hi Sharon. Okay, let's talk a bit about the track records, okay? And uh, by the way, guys, if you're learning something so far from the video, right, do remember to give us a like or a thumbs up. Uh, that will really, really help us. And at the same time, right, um, I'm going to continue and talk more about the developer. So when we talk about the developer, right, it's actually, uh, you can see MCL and Yen, uh, Yen Lot, right? So they have done like uh, projects such as Park Esta, Margaret Vale, uh, Lake Grande, So Acres. So they are not a, not a brand new developer. So if you want to see what they have done in the past, right, and see their track record, you can actually visit their past projects, like for example, J Gateway, Lakeview, and So Acres. So that is like a pretty good thing. And you can see from the size of their projects, right, what happens is that they have really done, they have really done a, 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 a huge, a lot of, uh, they have done like pretty big projects. Uh. So that is like something that is confident. Uh. Okay, wow, we have some questions. I thought it has to be distance from the school main office to management office. Okay, so what we have done, right, is that um, there is actually a tool whereby we are going to also paste in the in the in the in the chat, right? Whereby you can actually check is the school within a one kilometer distance, right, of your home, and that is actually a very very uh useful tool. It's actually a school query, and it is what the what the schools will use to determine is your is your home within one kilometer uh, distance. Uh. So that is actually something that you can uh, take a look at. 
and we have a question ah for investors better to get dividend for rental which is about 1600 per square feet that is a very 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 good question ah. um, and we are also going to dive deep into that and, and give you our thoughts ah. so stay tuned for that okay Let's talk about the new launch criteria comparison before we dive deep into the new versus resale. Uh, and uh, when we look at the new launch, Leiden Green is like 638 units, as we have said. And uh, surrounding it, you start to see Hill on Holland. Okay, it's going to be freehold, uh, 319, uh, 319 units. So it's also pretty good size, not too bad. And uh, it's a one kilometer walking distance to the, to the MRT. So when we are talking about brand new projects, right, these two are pretty comparable because both are also not near MRT. And there's one more project that's up upcoming, right, which is one Holland Village residence, okay? Because uh, when we see one Holland Village residence, right, it is much nearer to the MRT. It's, got, it's actually an upcoming uh, new launch, but the thing is, uh, the details are actually uh, not released yet, and it's actually a project by Far East, uh, by Far East, okay? So let's do a bit of comparison. Oh yes, by the way, if you want to if you want to see the distance, right, you can go to one map uh, school career. So these are the these are the information that you, that you can use to find this information. Okay. So when we talk about the one bedroom, uh, the only Leiden Greens uh, provide the one bedroom. Uh, as compared to Hill on Holland, because Hill on Holland is mainly built for more families, uh, two bedroom, three bedrooms, and even more. So there's still some units available at uh, Leiden Green. But the thing is, the per square feet is actually no joke. Uh, okay, no joke. Okay, over here. And when we compare the two bedroom, two bath, uh, what you can see is that in terms of uh, quantum, Leiden Green and Hill on Holland, right, it's not too far away. And uh, when it comes to uh, per square feet, it's also roughly similar. So when I look at this two project, right, um, if you're trying to buy a new launch in this area, they are roughly the same. So, so what's the difference? The difference will be if I were to pick Leiden Green, it will be um, the two bedroom or three bedroom, right? Which is like with the with the advantage of having the Nanyang uh, Primary School, right, nearby, uh, within a one kilometer one kilometer radius. Then that will be an added benefit. But if we look at uh, Hill and Holland, right, it's actually way closer to the Holland. So my take is that if you look at Hill and Holland, it's actually more to the um, more to the I would con if you look at Hugh or Holland, I would consider it more to be the Holland side and uh, Leiden Green more to the Farrell side. So I would rather prefer something that is actually closer to Holland. Uh, uh, when I walk there, you can get um, you can you can get um, access to the Holland Village area. Walk more walking distance. Oh, we have a question over here. Leiden Green was the old tulip that went on block. What's the view of on block potential for other projects uh, along Farrell, Spanish Village? What's uh, your view of on block sentiments in 2021-2023? Oh, this is a very good question. Uh, and at the same time, right, we are we should actually uh, get Sean to also talk about his uh, sentiments uh, regarding this. Uh. So in the recent news, uh, uh, let me di uh, digress and talk about this uh, because this is a very, very interesting question. Um, in the recent news, what we can see is that there has been quite a bit of uh, on-block activities or units that is like put on collective sale uh, in, in the market. Uh, my take is that, um, yes, there may be some uh, uh, demand. There will be demand coming in from developers. But if we look at what our government uh, have been saying, which is that they implemented um, a few policies. Uh, because uh, what you can see from the government is that they leave clues. Uh. So what, uh, and, and one thing is first, they release news that they release the measure whereby there is no more reissue of OTP. And that is actually to discourage new sales. Okay, And uh, they also came out in the news whereby they said that uh, the property prices may be too high and while because uh, because in the current market the the economy is still not very stable that is point number two and point number three is that uh, our government also came out to uh, to like have some news to talk about how about let's review what are the agent commissions uh, for new launches so that is like one thing that uh, may be happening in the future so with this right you can see that um, the direction is to not have prices run up too much. So if if you have a lot of on-block sales, right, this is one of the factors, right, that will cause prices to run up. And hence, right, I'll see I'll see that yes, there may be some more on-block that happen in the future, but if it's too much, our government will our government will step in to dampen the the, the whole environment. So that is my take. So um, if you are talking about buying properties, 
I I can go, I, I will consider going into on-block potential properties. But the thing is, I will go in and stay in it. So in the so in so so the point is um if it unblocks, good. If it doesn't unblock, then I have a nice home to stay. So that's the main point. Yeah, and yes, there is actually more requirements like green buildings, right? That will add up to upfront uh, development costs. Oh, this is a very good point. Okay, let me explain a bit about what this means. Uh. Okay, so what's happening right now is that if you if got if the developers um if the developers decide to put in balconies, they can have an additional 7% uh, gross floor area, which is uh, everyone will build balconies up because they can charge the each of the buyers the balcony space, right? And if the developers put in measures like developing like green buildings, right? What happens is that instead of 7%, they can go all the way up to 10%, okay? So uh, in other words, right, um, I guess developers are also uh, price sensitive and conscious uh, uh, in, in the sense that if the additional 3% is worth the money to put into green buildings, they will do it. If it's not, then they won't. So, so as, a, as a rule of thumb, when it comes to calculations, I would just add in the 7% for balcony area and not put in the additional requirement for green buildings. Okay, so let's do uh, let's move on and talk about the three bedroom potential when they com when we are comparing Leiden Green and Hill on Holland. Okay, so when we look at these two uh, projects, right, again, their price in terms of quantum is similar the per square feet is similar. So once again, the difference, right, will come in in terms of, well, do you really prefer Holland more or do you prefer to be staying the Farrer Road area more? So I, for me personally, if, you are, if it comes to three bedroom, I will take the one that it has uh, access to uh, within a one kilometer radius of Nanyang Primary. So that is my take. So for here on Holland, right, we need a one kilometer radius. There is no uh, schools. So there is schools are, are outside the one kilometer radius, but for Leiden Green, for Block 26, is near Nanyang Primary. So that is the point that I will see when it comes to choosing between the two. Okay, so it comes to the question. Um, there will be compare. We also need to compare among the resale. And when it comes to Leiden, Leiden Green, right, the nearby is definitely Leiden Residence. Okay, Leiden Residence is a freehold project. There's 381 units, so it's also pretty well sized. And the mega project in the past, right, which is the Leiden, is actually 600 meters away from MRT. Not that it is nearer more walkable and it's a huge project so um let's do the comparisons uh. and when you go more to the holland area right there's actually holland residence and uh, pravis uh, pravis yes so both are freehold projects uh. so there's there is actually pretty interesting to compare these uh, projects itself okay so when we look at the one bedroom units right you can see that um, the comparison that is that you have right is actually deleted. So when we're looking at deleted, right, it's asking from one million dollars, one point oh seven million uh, six hundred over square feet at one thousand six hundred uh, eighty eighty six per square feet. So when we look at the these two comparison, right, uh, if you look at the quantum basis, it's still palatable. But when we look at the per square feet basis, this is something that we want to take into consideration. So what do I mean by this? You see, um, when we look at the per square feet, we may take a 10 to 15% discount uh, from this uh, 2,600. So it will come down to maybe 2,003. When we when compa compare this 2,003, right, this is a discount from a uh, freehold to become leasehold. So when we compare this 2,003 and this 1,600 over uh, uh, let's call this 1,007. Uh, 2,003 and 1,007, right? The gap is still going to be 20 over percent. So for a property, right, like this is 2020, uh, 2010 versus to this to, this, today, this year is 2021, right? The difference is actually about 11 years. For an 11 years gap, and the price difference to be more than 20%, it, it actually says that the leader is more undervalued. So this is one thing that I want to I want to see. Yeah. Well, not only that, wow, there's actually new requirements that uh, that our minister just announced that 80% new buildings must be fulfilled uh, green requirement. Wow, very good. Thank you for, for the update. Our team will also take uh, do a research uh, to understand more about this, uh, what's happening over here. Okay. So we have talked about the one bedroom, uh, which is okay. Let's uh, wait, wait. Let me come back, come back to talk about the one bedroom. So once again, when we look at the pricing point, right, the Leiden is um is more undervalued compared to Leiden Green. Uh, and the thing is, uh, but the thing is, 
I would actually consider something that's closer to the city centre. So um, we actually look into the Sportiswood area. Okay, so that is actually something that be that would be interesting to look at in terms of like the resale and the new launch in the whole area when compared to the, the leader. So uh, do remember to also check out our video. Okay, our video on Avenue South, whereby we also talk about the resale in the area, right, and the the potential or the possibilities in that video. So that's actually something worth looking into and studying into okay so when we look at uh these project right okay so okay so when we look at this the leaden leaden residence um and leaden green in terms of two bedroom right what we can see is that the leaden is asking for 1.6 million whereas when we look at leaden residence it's actually 2.8 million so in terms of quantum right leaden residence is actually pretty crazy man and the per square feet is 2006 it's even higher than what you can get in leaden green uh. and the, the the size is actually 1000 uh, 1044 square feet uh, 1044 square feet so in other words right when we do this comparison right we can see that in terms of quantum leaden green still is still like more palatable but the leaden will pose, will actually be a one good advantage uh, one good advantage yes uh, the, uh, very good um, we have a uh, I still can't pronounce your name sorry but um, you have a very good point that the leaden TOP in uh, 2015 is just that their, their lease hole starts uh, their lease actually starts in 2010 yes yes uh, Sharon Sim you are right the leaden is actually lease hole uh, the thing is that the leaden is lease hole but in terms of uh, Per square feet, the gap is way, way too far. The gap is way too crazy. So let's think about it. Lah. Today, if you if you tear down the leaden, and like is the the the, the you, that means that uh, each unit the land cost in terms in terms of gross floor area is thousand five. If you put in a construction cost of three hundred fifty, thousand five plus three fifty is gonna be like one thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. One thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars, right? It's still way below what Leaden Green is uh, selling for. Uh, so there's still like some advantage over here. La. So it's in other words, I, I will call this below replacement cost. Uh. It's actually below replacement cost. So it's actually worth looking into. Okay. Let's compare the, this uh, Leaden residence with the three bedroom in Leaden Green. So once again, uh, let me bring you up to date again. Leaden residence is 1,000 square feet for two bedroom. 2.8 million. Uh, 2,600 over uh, per square feet. But when we look at the three bedroom, uh, Leiden Green is about the same size, almost 1,000 square feet. The per square feet is similar and the quantum is lower, 2.45 million. So when we compare the two bedroom in uh, Leiden Residence versus the three bedroom in Leiden Green, Leiden Green is actually better because you are getting uh, a low quantum about the same size almost the same size, a lower quantum, almost the same size, similar per square feet. And when we look at this, right, this means that you're buying a brand new property at a 10 year old resale price, uh, sorry, six years old re resale price. So this is actually something that is actually worth looking into if you are someone that really wants to buy resale, okay? If you're okay with lease hold, then the lead right, will be more interesting. So this is the, the point that we look at in terms of three bedroom. And when it comes to lead residence being at 4.8 million or uh, probably at three point, uh, almost 3.6 million, these are the numbers that will start to get crazy, okay? So once again, if you're learning something so far from this uh, video sharing here today, right? do remember to give us a thumbs up and like. It will really, really, really help us. And do remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Huh? Okay. Now, so let's talk about the exit strategy. Like, um, because you see, when we buy, right, we also want always want to buy with the end in mind. We also always want to know, right, what is our potential exit. And when we look at this, right, if we talk about Leiden Green, my take is that if you are looking into the three bedroom uh, units, right, in block 26, it's actually very suitable for a home investor because it, I can imagine that a family with children, you can start, you can get into with, with the option to get into um, Nanyang Primary, right? And at the same time, being at a brand new a brand new property at a resale price, that is something that I will actually look into for the three bedroom. So once again, 
I hope all of you uh, learned something here today and, uh, and, 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 and this video has brought you some value. Okay, so, so tomorrow, uh, on Thursday, we have another section by Sean that will touch on the BCA requirements, that will touch on these new topics, right? And he will share with all of you about this, okay? So watch out for our Thursday section, our Facebook and YouTube live, okay? And I'll see you soon, guys. Bye.